uh, being an American and speaking my mind about 9-11 uh, was not easy because well, I have my own opinions and I didn't dare mention some of them. And uh, this, this was actually written after a luncheon with someone who had devoted herself, <coughs> devoted her writing to the event as well. Ground Zero Gray. The gray space between dishes was thick as fog and older than sin. It left us drowsy, sipping steamy tea, musing over faded dance partners and favorite candidates who'd lost cherished elections. After the crab cakes, we perused her book, autographed with best wishes to an old friend, ink fading to gray before it dries. She labored for this read, gave birth to it, kicking and squealing, the ground zero epic, thick with hard-bound grief, demanding suckered remembrance of lost Americans. I mistakenly recalled that Americans called Hiroshima ground zero before we dropped the bomb. Someone wise once told me that it had to be done. No way to avoid it. Gray planes crossing gray ocean, dropping fat gray bombs on sleeping gray cities, the aftermath of gray ghosts drifting through smoke, burning strips of skin melting from gray bones <coughs> like liquid ash. I suppose in the gray September morning, clouds breaking before the transport missile of Shanghai travelers, targeted toward the promise of a glorious hereafter by vigilant sons of Mecca. Perhaps the Twin Towers were also unavoidable. Always gray areas for lips to debate, wondering how far we may go. I comment on how many non-Americans died that day, pondering the choice of how to die. At 38,000 feet in a ball of flame or quiet as a moth, gray petal whispering a final sigh, against the sallow pit, satin pillow, pillow of ignorant content. Lunch finished, words spent, gray closed palms, hands down across the great divide of table between the seas of our silent and diplomatic discourse. Toes touch beneath the tablecloth, sensible shoes of middle age. Mute thoughts converge as I hold my gaze upon the fall of her gray hair over her opinionated brow. Seeing in the unswerving stare of her eyes the black line of her singular, insulated, polarized white horizon, where I may never travel in my traitorous, subversive, hedonist's pursuit of myriad graves.